Hey friends, welcome back to Ball Homestead. My name is Beverly and I'm so glad you're here. Today we're gonna do some dehydrating. I have went out, my sister actually gave me this idea earlier and I've done it, made like onion top pesto in the past and stuff. But what she was doing was cutting her onion tops and putting them in the dehydrator to use in recipes. So that's what we're gonna do today. I went out and trimmed all of our big onion tops and we're gonna get those chopped up and in the dehydrator. I um, also have some herbs, but we'll probably do those tomorrow. Hopefully these will get done overnight and then we can replace them with the herbs we're gonna dry tomorrow. Anyways, we're gonna get started on that. All right, I just trimmed these and we're just gonna get them chopped. I'm gonna grab a bunch of them at once and we're just gonna chop them. I'm gonna try to do it kind of small, like what you would buy a dehydrated onion at the store. You can trim, these are my big onions and they're gonna grow more tops. So you can go back and trim those off and get more than one use out of them. They're very tender and soft and they would be so good in recipes. And I don't know why I've never thought of this, but she had told me we were at my niece's birthday party earlier and she said that that's what she was doing was dehydrating the onion tops and we got to talk and I was like I've made onion pesto before but I never even thought of this so that's what we're gonna do I actually have been we went to my niece's birthday party this morning well it was this afternoon for lunch and then we come in and I have been cleaning freezers out friends we took three pigs my dad actually came and got the pigs for us and took to the butcher shop so we have three pigs coming back probably next week i'm super excited to have all this fresh pork in the house and so i have been cleaning out freezers i have one freezer completely emptied so that we can add all this pork to it and um, I have enough, all of them organized pretty much all at my refrigerator part, freezer part. And I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I just was tired of working on it. <laughs> we have been, I've been in here on and off. I live a very busy life, so I'm always running. I'm, I've been wore out this week. So just getting that accomplished was very, very nice. But what we're gonna do is I've washed all of our trays. I tried the strawberry tops and friends, those were not my cup of tea. So the chickens got those, but I got all my trays nice and clean. And we're gonna put these onion tops on them and fill them pretty full. And we're gonna get those in the dehydrator. I'm gonna go ahead and start on this other tray. I got them all good and clean. They're all stained up from all the years of use but we are going to fill these trays up. I'm so excited about this. I don't, I don't know why I've never thought of it before, but those tops are gonna regrow anyways, and it'll help that plant because they were all kind of laying over from laying over. So now we're just gonna get another handful and keep chopping. Like I said, I'm trying to do them kind of small. I have a bunch of parsley out there too. I was noticing that really needs to be picked. Wayne and I on our way to the birthday party today stopped at Sarah's Nursery. It's a nursery in um, Magnus, Arkansas. Friends, if you're ever up this way, stop at her beautiful nursery. It is just, if you can't find something that you like there, something's wrong. She has some beautiful flowers and plants. I mean, it's just breathtaking. And we picked up a few things. I got a couple of elephant ears and some these hummingbird vines she had advertised. And I'm excited about them because we love watching the hummingbirds. My husband really does. But um, it, it, it's a beautiful place. And 
she is so nice and just a it's a, it's a neat place if you're ever out and about stop and check it out and we got tray number two ready to go in I don't know if I've ever done that on there, but it's it's super good too. You use onion tops and Parmesan cheese and just uh, some walnuts and all that and make a pesto with them. It's really good. I actually have some left from last year, so I opted for now not to make any more. But my sister was talking about this and I thought, I need to do that with the onion tops at the house because they are just falling over. And I really need to get all my green onions pulled in the, this week and get them chopped and in the freezer because they are ready. And I like to have green onions in the freezer because I like to cook with them. And um, I like to have them in my stuff. Wayne's not a big onion fan, y'all all know if you followed the channel very long, but don't mean I don't like them. But we're going to get this last tray filled, and then I think I'm going to get some silicone mats, and we're going to do another tray with the, because uh, I only have three trays with my dehydrator, but I think I can get a silicone mat and put it over one of the wire racks, and we can use that. But I don't want to put my parsley in there with the onions because I don't want them smelling like onions, you know. So let me get that mat together, get this tray in, and then we'll chop these last greens. All right, we'll get back to chopping these last ones. This is going to be about perfect. These were all just my big onions. Like I said, we have a ton of green onions out there. And I will work on those probably tomorrow, getting them chopped, bagged, and frozen. And um, then we'll work on that parsley also, because there is a ton of it. I love having the garden so we can go out there and get fresh produce. And I like to do something with everything so that we don't waste food. And this just makes me happy using these onion tops to make dehydrated onions. My stand still has not come in. I look, I kept thinking, why is that stand not in yet? So I did a look and they had, I guess the package was damaged and it was returned to Amazon, so I had to reorder it. So I'm still using my little stand, but maybe in the next week or so, it will be back. The garden is looking lovely with all the rain we've been getting. I feel like we're getting closer to May and that's the showers, or the April showers are starting. Um, but, because we've been so windy for the longest, but now we're finally starting to get that rain two or three days in a row, which is, it's good for your garden, for sure. I'm gonna pull some of these bigger pieces out and then we're gonna put the rest of these on this tray. I may have to do two because there's quite a bit here. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay. A few more there. I'm excited, guys. Anytime I am told of a new idea or something, I just I get excited. Ah, just making a mess. Okay, that's all we need to do today. 
I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, it's the next day and we are gonna get to grinding up some deer meat. I cleaned freezers out yesterday and Wayne and I love deer burger. We use it in so many recipes and we have a bunch of steaks. We're going to grind that all up and to, deal, to deer burger. All right, we're gonna get going, getting this deer meat ground up. We love deer burger. Wayne and I use this in so many recipes and it's really probably our favorite thing to use in our deer tacos that we enjoy most every week, at least once a week. And um, we're running really low of that. Whenever I cleaned freezers out, we only had like three packs of deer burger left. And I was like, that is not going to work. We have all this steak. So we're going to grind all this deer steak up into deer burger because that's more of a usable state for us. Some people might think we're crazy, but the older we've got, the more we enjoy eating the deer burger than the steak. So we are just gonna grind all that steak up and get it into a form that I know we will use quickly in our household. And to me, that means something because I know it's getting used in a good, timely manner. And our son, he's an avid hunter and every deer season, he gives us a ton of meat. I help him with the processing and we work as a team usually together, but sometimes I'll do it for him if he's busy. And then I'll, you know, he'll come out here and get his meat and he always gives us some. Wayne hasn't hunted in quite a few years. It's a time thing for us. We're so busy. We're either, you know, it's animal time or, you know, garden time, or we just have babies coming or something. And we both work a ton. My son works a ton too, but he doesn't have the garden and all that other thing. And he really enjoys hunting. So he always, you know, it's kind of a win-win. We, I help with the processing. I take care of that for him and get it all vacuum sealed up. He gives us deer meat. And so I'm very thankful for that because deer meat is probably my favorite meat. I raised my kids on it and, you know, there were some really tough times raising them. And if it wouldn't have been for deer meat, I don't know what we would have done, <laughs> honestly. But we enjoy it. I was raised, my dad is an avid hunter. And so I think that's why I, to I enjoy it so much is because I've had it my whole life. And um, I, you know, am very thankful for it. We have our quart bags. I'm just going to, this is like a more than a ground round. It has hardly any fat in it. And it is absolutely delicious. We love it anyways. And our preferred, the older we got, we prefer deer burger because we can use that in so many recipes. And I'm just gonna do these flat like that and I'll just keep going through till we get all this meat ground up. It probably won't take maybe three, two more bowls like this and we'll have it all done. But this is, I was cleaning freezers and when I was thinking about it, I was like, we're low. We only had three packs of deer burger left. And that is a huge staple in our house. Um, so I was like, well, We've got all this steak. We're going to do some deer burger up. So that's what we're doing today. And then we're gonna get back on our dehydrating. All the onions are done. And we will continue on. We're like big deer taco people. We eat tacos mostly once a week. There's a little bit left in there, but we're gonna add to it. So we're gonna keep going on the grinding. Some people think that deer is uh, too gamey of a taste for them, but I love it. Um, there's something about that flavor to me that is just wonderful. And uh, so it doesn't, it's never bothered me. My husband, if we do steaks, I always end up soaking it in salt water to kind of get some of that gamey flavor out because he prefers it that way. He wasn't raised though like I was on deer meat. So 
you know, it just depends on the person. But but he does love the the deer tacos, and we do spaghetti and other items with our deer meat. I'm going to show you what we ended up getting with this, and we will get moving on to the next thing. Let's see how many we got. I'm hoping I can make this work. I'm going to have to get a couple gel on bags, but we'll use those first if we do. I knew I was running kind of low on quart bags, but I need it. We were just at the store. I should have picked up another box. Probably just have one pack, maybe two. All right, that little job is done, and I know we will use these quicker. We go through a ton of deer meat in ground form because we use it for all kinds of recipes. And we, like I said, we were down to three packs, and I thought, oh goodness. We've got all this steak that we might eat eventually, but it's going to take us a lot longer because Wayne and I are more taco, spaghetti, those kind of people. The older we get, that's the kind of stuff we like. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten meals worth of deer meat ground up. We're getting rain right now, so I'm going to run out, chop some parsley, and I'll be right back. Here is our massive bowl of parsley. We are going to try to get as much dehydrated this year as possible so we can have throughout the season. I usually grow plenty to do from one season to the next, but this year I'm really focusing because of prices of everything going up. Parsley can be used in making all kinds of things and we love it. So. We're really going to focus on that. We're going to get our dehydrator cleaned out from yesterday's onion chopping, and I'll show you what we got there. All right, so I'm going to just start grabbing some trays. We have five or six. Oh, I checked them early this morning, and I thought they were done, but they're going to have to go for longer. Well, fiddlesticks, we can't do that, but we can get all this parsley prepped to go into the dehydrator. I thought it was good and dry this morning. I checked it about 1 a.m. I wish I'd have just turned it back on then, but we're just gonna pull all the leaves off and put them in a separate bowl. So when those get dry later today, we can pop these in. All these stalks we're gonna leave out, but we're just gonna go through and pull all the leaves off and set the stalks aside. I'll give those to the chickens or something, or the bunnies might even enjoy them. That's frustrating. I really thought those were done, but they are not. They need to go one more time. That's one thing with I've noticed with dehydrating. It'll say, you know, 165 for eight hours, but most of the time I end up having to run my stuff twice. That's why I woke up at one and thought, go check it. And it felt crispy, but I guess it wasn't all the way to the back. So note to self. We'll get all these greens prepared and ready to go in when those finish. Like I said, I just pull them off, the leaves off, and then after they're dry, we can crumble them up. I used to have multiple dehydrators, but I just kind of downsized since I have this big one and got rid of, gave away the others. Um, times like this, I wish I had them, but anyhow, those will be done. Then we'll pop these in and go from there. 
we may go ahead and get all of our green onions pulled that's ready and get those chopped and in the freezer today that way that little chore is done because i i know i'm gonna have to go pick up pork this week after work and i'm excited about it i can't wait to see how much we get from that so i'd like to have all my little extra chores kind of under wraps so i don't have those things to worry about this is going to be a bunch of parsley but once it dries and you crumble it up it's not going to be near as much anywho i'm just going to keep plucking along here until we get it all done i have three parsley plants that may have been a mistake but I don't feel like it'll put off as much in the hot heat as it is now. So I want to get as much as I can dehydrated up and in jars so we have that to last us through the winter. That's what we try to do. I mean, food preservation to us is saving money, knowing what we're eating, and, um, you know, growing healthy food because... Uh, I'm not saying we never eat out or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. But when we eat at home, we know what we're eating. We know it's fresh and good, that it was raised here on our homestead. And we don't really buy a lot of store food here for us. Uh, we eat from our garden when the garden's coming on. And we put up as much food as possible to last from one growing season to the next. And I feel like a lot of people are gonna really have to get back to that with the cost of food. That's the main thing for what really got us into gardening was saving money, friends. We were raising kids and they can eat like crazy. And, you know, we wanted to save money and have fresh food that we knew what was in it because a lot of the things that you buy from the store has been sprayed with all kinds of pesticides and stuff. And we do not use pesticides here on our farm because we have bees. But I don't know if we do now or not. We, I don't know if that hive is going to make it. I've got to get in there, but we've had, I had planned on it this weekend, but we've had so much rain. It has been pretty much impossible. My husband offered to buy me a couple more nukes and I told him no because right now I'm pretty overwhelmed and I have a good friend that raises bees, a couple of good friends, and I will just buy honey from them. That will, if we don't get any, that's what I'll do because um, we have our hands full as of right now. Me running a business and everything on a daily basis i am you know i put in about a 14 to 16 hour day every day and some days i'm pretty beat so um I, i'm gonna try to lighten my load a little bit with if, if the bees are there great if they're not you know it just wasn't meant to be and i'm not gonna worry too much about it because i have a good source to buy wonderful honey the way we do our honey and we do it as natural as possible we do feed when they're weak in a weakened state or something like that but we don't feed for no longer than we have to We have a ton of parsley here, friends. A ton. I feel like those onions will probably be done in a few hours. I may get some pans out and pop these in the oven just so we can get a good start on them on a low setting. But we are going to have, if these plants keep producing like this, we're going to have parsley running out our ears. All 
All right, I looked it up online and to do the parsley, we need to set our oven at 170. It said it, if your oven only goes to 180, that's fine. Mine does go to 170, so we've got that set. And I have a couple of pans. We're gonna load up with a thin layer of parsley. It says try not to overlap them and put them in there for 20 minutes. Check them after 20 minutes, then if they're not done, add additional five minutes at a time. So that's what we're gonna do so we can get this done. Here I just have my roaster pan and we are just gonna spread out parsley in this roaster is in a thin layer, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready to go in. I'm gonna get this other pan here that I have and we are going to load it up as well. And then if we need to reload it, we'll reload it. But I want to get these herbs done. Because I have some dill and, and rosemary and stuff out there that needs to be dehydrated also. And I want to get uh, those done this week. That's kind of my plan. Some of these little tender ones. I may just kind of pluck off here real quick. Still wet from being washed, but it'll dry in the oven. It will dry. I feel like the rabbits will really like these little parsley stalks too. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get these in the oven as soon as we get up to temperature. And we will go from there. I'm just gonna keep plucking along till we get all these done. And we may go ahead and do the deal and stuff after just to get this done quickly. I feel like it'll take longer than 20 minutes because my dehydrator takes eight hours at 165 and most of the time it's not dry. So I don't know, we'll see. We're gonna do this trial and, and go from there. And I'm probably gonna stop with this one. I don't wanna overload them too much. We're just gonna pop these in the oven and we're gonna set a timer for 20 minutes. we'll be back. All right, I decided while I was out there to grab this dill and we're gonna go ahead and get it in the oven, chopped up and in the oven with the parsley. All right, so let me get a pan. Okay, we don't have as much. So I'm just gonna use a small pan here for it. And we're just gonna get it chopped finely. Smells so wonderful between the onions and the parsley and soon the dill will be going. Oh, it's wonderful. And I did go ahead and pull one bed of green onions and we're gonna get those chopped and in the freezer. That's what I try to do on my days off is work at getting stuff put up on those days off so I don't have to as often through the week. All right, we got that much deal. We're gonna get that in there also. Okay. Now then, let me get my board rinsed and we'll start chopping onions. All right, this is about half, well, not quite half what we have over there, but we're gonna go ahead and get this chopped. I think I can handle it pretty easy. And we're just gonna freeze these. This is what I do. I'll chop down the greens as far as I can and that, that feel like good greens. And we'll use all those in our cooking, making salsas this summer, all that. I save as much as I possibly can. Times are, are tough, so every little bit that we save is just more to put in our home cooking. So 
We could actually dehydrate these if we want, but I think I'm gonna have quite a few. Plus, I'll probably get another trim on those big onions. So we're gonna freeze all of these. And that's probably about as good as it's gonna get, guys. That's just one small bunch there. We're gonna get these in a bag and continue on. I have one more bed that's ready to harvest now, and I may try to get that done. We're gonna see what we can get off this one bed, and we'll go from there. But we have potatoes in that bed, and around the edges, I plant green onions just so that we can get another thing out of that space. It's raining or I would take you along for the journey, but we have been having rain every day for the last few days. So I've been slipping out there. That's, that's pretty good for their first chop. We're gonna keep going. All right, here's the other half of those onions. And we're just gonna chop just like we did the other until I feel like that we're at a point where the greens are not as soft anymore and then we will stop but i want to get as much as i can out of these wonderful onions because these will go great in salsa and meals just all kinds of goodness and i have a whole nother bed and i may go out there and do it I do this every year with green onions because I like to have them in there for just grabbing a quick handful for a recipe that I don't have to chop up and going from there. And so I don't have to buy a big onion because it's just me and Wayne now. And I do have some big onions planted, but um, those are my, mainly for making, you know, chili base and uh, salsa and stuff like that this summer. These are for quick grabbing. I mean, I can use them for whatever, but they are for grabbing quick to add to a recipe really quick. I have made a mess down here on the floor with all my greens. That's okay. All right, we're gonna get those in a bag. and see how many we have here. This is just so handy to have right here in my refrigerator freezer and to grab out a handful when I need it for something and not have to buy an onion or chop an onion. This is, this is just how I do it every year. I'll save me a few for fresh eating, but mostly I grow them to freeze them for quick fixings. I like having simplicity in my life and this to me is saving time later down the line of having to chop up onions and all that so that's why i do it all right we have pretty much Oh, I mean, this is a really fat half gallon, but we could probably fit the rest of those in there. I may run out and grab them. All right, I didn't have that many in that other bed that was ready, but I went ahead and pulled the ones that were. And I'm just gonna show you, I mean, most of y'all probably know how to do this, but I got to thinking you might not. And all I do is cut the end off and then take the lower greens and pull it off and rinse it off and it's ready to cut. Literally takes a few seconds. <laughs> When you're just doing a few, it don't take no time, but when you're putting up a gallon of them, it does. But I love to have them on hand for quick meals where I can just toss in a few for flavor. And Wayne will let me get by with that as long as I cook those onions down. <laughs> he does not like the taste of a crunchy onion. We have two more beds up in the upper part of the garden that aren't ready yet, and those will be harvested later on. I figure all this rain we're getting is gonna make a huge difference in the growth of stuff. And whenever I was pulling these, I noticed that the potatoes are starting to look like they're starting to die. So we may have potatoes to pull soon. 
We have two more beds of those also, but they were planted a little bit later. So they won't quite be ready yet. And that's okay. I kind of like getting them in, in burst. Anywhere there's like dead on it, on the green part, I go ahead and pull that off and it kind of just helps pull all the dirt and stuff off of that green onion. It's super easy. And then I just put them over here on my cutting board and we'll chop these up. And that's gonna be the last of the onions for now, but this will last for a long time in our house. I do have the big onions is what we trimmed the tops on the other day for the dehydrating. Um, they, uh, I'm, I've never had luck growing very big ones, so I'm praying this year I'm doing better. And I did notice that the broccoli is making heads. I'm super excited. I'm hoping we have the best broccoli year yet. The only thing I did different this year was in the fall, I put a whole bunch of rabbit manure on that bed. I mean a bunch. And that broccoli looks wonderful this year. So I'm not sure if that's the reason or what, but I'm thankful, whatever it is. All right, we're just gonna get this chopped. And this will be the last of our onions. For now, we'll definitely have more later. This is a great start to have in the freezer. Noticed Wayne was out there feeding, thank bless him, when I went out. So I'm thankful for that. And like I said, I'll just put this in my refrigerator freezer because when I'm making something and it calls for onions, I usually never put the full amount that it calls for because my husband doesn't like onion, but I'll put a little bit in there just for flavor. And he'll say, as long as it's cooked down good, I'll eat it, so. Anyhow, looky there, guys. Nice full bag of onions. I have got to organize this freezer sometime this week. I just have not had time. All right, we're just waiting on our herbs and we'll be back when those are finished. I did turn the oven up 10 degrees to 180 and I set it for 20 more minutes because they're not close to being dry enough yet. All right, some of our onions are done, so we're gonna go ahead and get these in there. They're nice and crunchy and crispy sounding. So we're gonna go ahead and get those in our jar here. That's what we want, a nice crispy sound. You don't want any wet on there or your um they will mold and not be any good so i'm gonna throw those in let's see we run our hands along and loosen some of these up a bit they smell wonderful if you're an onion lover <laughs> All right, that can go in there. And now we will get see if any more trays are ready. But look at there, we have our first green onions out of the dehydrator. Let's see. These are ready. Maybe it was just the top tray because these are ready too.
crazy to me that this bowl full of onion tops has turned into this little amount. And like I said, we will be doing this multiple times throughout the growing season because I want to fill a couple of jars up with this. I think it would be really handy to add to recipes, soups, things like that. Very happy. We're gonna check that last tray. Well, there's more than one tray. I forgot there's that other silicone lamp. Supposed to dry yet, so they have to go for a while. But we got our onions going. I'm so happy. And like I said, I want to do this multiple times throughout the growing season uh, before we harvest onions because this will be really nice to have, and I may even experiment with turning these into onion powder. It would be green, but I don't care about that. Um, I may try that. We will see. We may try to do some experimenting with some of our herbs this year. But I wanna get as many herbs as I can put up because like I said, the economy's terrible absolutely terrible and I feel like it's only going to get worse so we need to be vigilant and stay focused on taking care of our own families. All right friends all of our herbs are done in the oven so we're going to get all those jarred up and you'll see how much parsley we got. I did kind of stick a little bit but I love the crispiness of them. That's what you want. You always, when you're dehydrating herbs and stuff, you want them to be really dry. You don't want them to be moist at all. And the smell, friends, is just amazing. Um, let's see here. Here. Oh, I may be using the oven more often. That didn't take very long. I ended up doing it on some of the thicker pans a third time. But hey, that's not near as long as my dehydrator takes. And sometimes it's kind of frustrating that, you know, it takes so long. But anyways, we got her done. We're gonna get these in our, our thing here. See how much stuff. I may have to use the roaster pan from now on because they didn't stick. And yeah, it's more of a a non-stick base though. Than I thought it would be. Okay. There's all of our parsley. Can you believe <laughs> that entire bowl of parsley? gave us this much parsley, friends. That's why we have to be vigilant and stay on top of this parsley situation this year. We have to, so we can get lots of fresh herbs put up. So we've got these two, and we have a small amount of dill. I'm gonna grab a jar for that. Um. that we're already getting stuff from the garden. All right. 
hunt. Here is our our herbs that we got today. All those greens are so small once they're dehydrated, but I'm thankful for every one of them. And I'm thankful for you too. Thank you for stopping back by our homestead. Please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, friends, goodbye.